All right, let's talk about McCarthy for a moment. No, not Kevin McCarthy, Joseph McCarthy. In a piece for MSNBC.com, Congresswoman Judy Chu says that she is the target of, quote, the right's new McCarthyism, and not just from her Republican colleagues, but also from right-wing media outlets. Here's how Congressman, uh, Texas Congressman, rather, Lance Gooden spoke about Congresswoman Chu just last month. I think everyone that's standing up for Chinese Communist parties should be looked into. Yes, I question her either loyalty or competence. And I'm, I'm really disappointed and shocked that someone like Judy Chu would have a security clearance and be entitled to confidential intelligence briefings. Loyalty. Now, what could Congresswoman Chu have done to lose Lance Gooden's trust? She voted against creating a committee to investigate U.S.-China competition, which she feared would intensify anti-Asian hate. For the record, 65 of her Democratic colleagues also voted against that panel. She also defended Dominic Ng, who President Biden appointed to lead U.S. trade interests in Asia against racist attacks from the right. So Lance Gooden believes Congresswoman Chu must be disloyal to the U.S. because she denounces anti-Asian hate. Never mind that Gooden supported overturning the 2020 presidential election results, an actual act of disloyalty to our country. Congresswoman Chu says it best. The right's ugly and false accusations build on the centuries-long stereotype that Chinese Americans and Asian Americans more broadly are forever foreigners in their own land. Democratic Congresswoman Judy Chu of California joins me now. Congresswoman, thank you so much for coming back on the show. It's great to see you. Um, we, we have a lot to talk about uh, in terms of what we originally wanted to talk to you about, which is that segment I just outlined. But I do want to get your reaction to Donald Trump's social media post this morning. What do you make of this development? Uh, I think that uh, he is trying to... Uh, uh, to incentivize the right to uh, be even more sympathetic to him. The fact that he would actually announce the arrest himself uh, makes me wonder if he is trying to do something similar to uh, a January 6th uh, move, which is to get his supporters to be even more uh, fervent in their support and who knows what they would do. Let me uh, get to your piece that you wrote on MSNBC.com. Uh, you write, in part, this newfangled McCarthyism combines red scare tactics, racism, and xenophobia. The allegations, which won't stop with Ng and me, are downright dangerous. How dangerous are these attacks for you personally uh, and uh, the uh, AAPI community? Well, I feel that... Uh uh, Lance Gooden put a target on my back by saying that I was disloyal and uh, uh, should be investigated as a spy for China. Uh, and it is outrageous. It's disgusting. It's, it's downright racist because it is based on this forever foreigner stereotype that Chinese Americans and Asian Americans have faced for decades. Uh, but it is dangerous overall. And it comes on the heel of three years of anti-Asian hate when President Trump called the COVID-19 virus, China virus. Uh, we've had 11,500 anti-Asian hate crimes and incidents. And who knows where these accusations of being spies for China could lead. Uh, it only fans the flames of xenophobia. Yeah, and it seems like it's become more of the mainstream Republican Party. I mean, the GOP in recent years has been more focused on these sorts of culture wars and racist rhetoric rather than uh, solving issues for the American people. This racist rhetoric, I would argue, plays into the GOP's main work as a whole, no? Well, uh, I think that they are dividing society and they are playing their culture wars. Uh, that is clear in terms of what they're doing with uh, the China Select Committee. That's why I did vote against the China Select Committee. I thought that it could increase xenophobia. Uh, and guess what? It did, because it was a signal to people like Lance Gooden that they could uh, accuse me and Dominic Ng of being spies for China. And actually, they're not stopping there. The, the numbers that they're pointing out 
are increasing every day, including the latest ones being the former mayor of our local city and the former president of an esteemed uh, community group, the Chinese Consolidated Benevolent Association. So they are pointing fingers. It's it's downright scapegoating. And what is really disturbing is that history could repeat itself, because let us not forget that uh, when Japanese Americans were incarcerated, it did not happen overnight. They first started uh, going after the leaders and used that to isolate them. Several months later, Japanese Americans lost everything that they had in the mm. camps. Uh, and uh, it was based on an accusation of espionage by Japanese Americans, though not a single case was ever found. Hey, I'm so glad you bring up that point because uh, the tropes of uh, dual loyalty and uh, disloyalty, I think, are uh, rampant right now, and, and, and we need to fight them every chance uh, we get. Let me ask you about something that hits close to home to your district, um, and that is this executive order President Biden signed this week. Uh, it is designed to increase background checks. He signed it while visiting Monterey Park, California. As I mentioned, uh, 11 people were killed in a mass shooting there back in January. Uh, Monterey Park is part of your district. How important is this executive order, and what did it mean to you that Biden signed it while visiting your district? Well, uh, I was so gratified that he came to the district. We still have a hole that's that's gone through our hearts uh, because of the shooting and the community had yet to heal. So for the leader of the nation to come and console uh, the families of the 11 who were killed, as well as the nine who were wounded, and to console the whole community, which is still traumatized, was very, very meaningful. Uh, he reflected on his own experiences and the um, the victims' families uh, really appreciated it. Uh, and the fact that he ha had this um, executive order on gun safety was also very, very significant. For instance, um, this shooter may have been uh, caught with a red flag law. Uh, that is, he was mentally deteriorating and he was accumulating ammunition. Surely somebody in a circle knew about it, but I'm not sure that people in the immigrant community know that a red flag law even exists. So in his executive order, he is uh, going for enhanced outreach to communities for that. And also he is, he is pointing to the fact that FEMA will go into a community when there's a natural disaster and coordinate resources, but there isn't such a thing for mass shootings. And yet the community is in utter chaos. There has to be greater coordination of all the resources that are available. And that's what he is he is saying in this executive order should be done. Congresswoman Judy Shu, thank you so much. I greatly appreciate your time as always. Thank you so much.